I'm going to switch gears on you folks out here. It's a beautiful thing. And I'm Matt and Mr. Basil Chapman, folks. Don't forget, every trading day, he has a great show, 10 to 11 Eastern Standard Time. Better yet, though, on Fed Day, May 3rd, this coming Wednesday, 4 to 5.30 Eastern Standard Time, Basil's going to do an opening call webinar, subscriber webinar. Um, bottom line is that you can be a subscriber very easy by coming over to our website at TFNN. You sign up for his newsletter first. It comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. You get the newsletter. You're going to get some great information for a full month, and you also come into the webinar. Bottom line, if the, if the newsletter doesn't work for you, on the 29th day, you can cancel the newsletter, and you're still going to get a great education. Basil Chapman, what's going on? Well, this is a very, I think it's an important week because oh, yeah. uh, I've got a number of uh, indicators that I use and the whole thing about this webinar on Wednesday is it's going to be like a workshop I'm going to make it a, a very functional working webinar so that uh, you can take home uh, a lot of information that you can practice and stuff that I do all the time I can show you this is the chart of the Dow nice we're always looking for a peak D that's where we get a bit cautious that's actually where uh, within a, two days of that the, the spy the S&P made a, a top at that right here let me just show you this chart because there's all the stuff that i'll be talking about now of course i always have trouble <laughs> clicking on there it is the s p coming up there it is so i always look at this and i say okay there's a technique that i like to use i a long time ago when i used to hand chart with uh, engineering paper and pencil and a ruler i had to eventually get a 15 inch ruler because the market was going up so sharply it was way back um a couple of decades ago before the, everything went on to computers. Well, I found that trend lines became really important. And over the years, I've added to that. I've made a refinement of that. Instead of doing one line, a trend line, I make a little mini channel, just at like a 3 sixteenths of an inch. If it's going up, I make the top line green and the bottom line red. And what happens so often, I mean, I show this these charts. Uh, it doesn't matter what it is you'll always find that there's some chart that makes outer, outer wicks or the outer level of the candle where you can join the line. I, of course, you need at least two lines. I prefer if you can get three. And as the price gets to that, it either breaks out or it gets repelled. Well, look how many times uh, from that peak D, the S&P at 41 uh, in the uh, 4140 area gets repelled at that peak D, but then it becomes an important line. Look how many times in the S&P it popped up. And then what it did, it made a peak F. We actually went short the very next day. We took profits in that and uh, got taken out of our last position. for That, that one was a smaller loss than the others uh, because I, I wanted to keep it as long as possible. And then, of course, everything turned around Thursday and then moved up Friday. And now look what's happened. It's stalled where? It's stalled right. And these are just two trend lines. It's nothing complicated. Everybody on every platform is, has a trend line that they can draw. And here it is. We're into the red line. Hasn't broken the green line. But in the channel wing methodology, there's never an H. When you get to a G, you have to assess it. And here I have to say, hey, wait a minute. Is this a G which says, oh, be really careful because that's the end of the line? Or is this a brand new A? If it's an A, you say, are you kidding? Every single pullback I want to buy. But I like to be go one step at a time. And then I look at the, uh, the te technical indicators and I say, wait a minute. I've been speaking to you for about three or four weeks now saying the nine period moving average above the 14 period moving average, that's the green line above the black line, has been so strong. And if I go back to the Dow, there's a daily chart on the left. The same thing with the Dow. So what I said to subscribers, I think it was on Thursday, I said, look, here's a pattern I'm going to show you in great detail. And I'll just go to this one behind it. I'll get this away. We'll come back to this in a moment. And I showed them this chart here. And I said, look, I, I drew in these rectangles. I said, look what happens when the nine period moving average this is the daily chart. I made it just a single line, thick gray line for the Dow price itself. But the green is the nine period moving average and the black is the 14. I said, look what happens when the green is still strong above the 14. You can still go to an extra spike to the upside. Then you've got to be careful. Uh, it did the same thing, it spiked up there, and that was on the downside. So the pink said, hey, I'm turning green. I'm way above, below the black line. So that's very negative. So the, the nine 
14 crossover right here was still very negative. And then it turned around and you got a crossover in the nine. It went positive and we ran up. And now we've got, this is, this is Wednesday. This is Thursday. Yeah. I'm sorry, this, yeah, Thursday and then Friday extends even higher. Now we've stalled. So now what I want to, and this is what I'll be, I'll be going through a lot of charts to show this, this one technique. I've got so many others I'll be doing as well. But this uh, moving average, the nine period moving average can then make an M shaped pattern. This is where you've got to be careful. That's what happened over there. It went to an M pattern. So right here is where I'd be a little bit cautious because I think we've gotten overextended. There was a lot of buying upon buying because there was short covering. And then, of course, the good news with Microsoft and Meta. So we've had this extension to the upside, but not everything's participating. The semiconductors are still very weak, and I like to use that as kind of a benchmark for the market. There are a lot of things going. You spoke about the dollar. Let me just show you the dollar while we're looking at that. And so... In other words, we've got the resistance. You can see on the left side, we've got the resistance right there in the inside track, repellent zone of the Dow in leg E. You've got the S&P right here in leg G slash A. I'm thinking it's more like a G. It's going to need a bit of a breather here. And then when you talk about the dollar, which very often when the dollar starts to move, it has this counterpoint where, where gold can pull back, but very often the market um, tends to, it doesn't have to break down, but it tends to struggle to the upside and more likely comes down. So the dollar is at a critical point because it's the MACD's turned up, the stochastic still quite weak. The nine period moving average has a lot to go. So this is, I'll also be watching that. But I wanted to say for my subscribers, and the reason why this is such an important webinar is we are still long the Dow for in the Dow, uh, the diamonds, as well as the UDOW three times long. Um, Dow from the October low. So we've had trading positions on the upside for quite some time. Now we've sort of stepped back. We had that short position. We've, ta we've taken that off. And I'm looking at this and I'm saying, okay, I'm waiting for a pullback to be able to put those positions back on. We also have a, di a dividend stock. I like to have something that tends to look like it's got capital gain. What's the use of having a dividend stock if it drops 15, po 15 points so, or 15%? Um, so I like to have a dividend stock that has a chance to give capital gains as well as a dividend. We've got one that comes after the dividend on the 5th of May. We'll see if that's still holding, holding quite nicely here. We've got a speculative stock, a stock that ran up about 30%. It's pulled back today. We added a little bit that we had taken off. We added back today so far. That part's up quite nicely. So I'm really trying to get a, a, a smorgasbord of different positions for subscribers for the next few months to come. And I think that this is a great time to be looking at that. Uh, we've got all our techniques that we put into place. Uh, you can see the wedge going to the upside. It shows you very clearly where the support is. Um, I don't think it'd be a smash to the downside, but I think what the Fed does on Wednesday um, is gonna be very important, but the market right at this moment is a little bit vulnerable, even though it's had a spectacular move. So we'll be, Folks, this is a great time for a webinar. At, at TFNN, you hit the news, you're right on the front page, you're gonna hit Basil's opening call and you can get into the webinar. Basil, have a great one and a safe one. We look forward to showing